Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to implement Discord Rich Presence into your game. For those who are unaware, Discord Rich Presence basically tells Discord what you are playing and what you are currently doing in the game you are playing and shows it to everyone. This is something I recently implemented into Mega Man Maker and as the game is now open it should tell us here that we are currently playing the game and if we click on it it should give us some more info. It has the picture with the name of the game here and it says we are currently browsing the menu. If you are currently playing a level it will also display that by also stating the level's name. And if you are working on a level it will also display that alongside how long you have already spent in the editor. Those are just some examples that you can do with Discord Rich Peasants. There are many more things you can do, you can customize it to your game specifically. But before we get started, there are two things, pretty important things that I have to say. The first thing is that you need to have either Game Maker Studio 1 or Game Maker Studio 2. It does not work in Game Maker 8. And in this tutorial I will showcase it in Game Maker Studio 2, but if you have one then that's fine as well. The other thing, which is probably the most important, is that you need this extension called Dissonance by Rouser in order to implement Discord Rich Presence. Unfortunately, that does mean you have to pay 5 bucks, which in my opinion is worth it, but if you think differently, that's fine. Just know that you need this extension in order to implement Rich Presence, unless you want to rewrite a whole lot of C code in Gmail, which is just not worth the effort for $5. So once you have your extension and everything ready, then it's time to actually get started. First you need to add the extension to your project, which is most easily done by right clicking the extensions thing, add existing from my library, Game X Studio One has something similar, then you can install dissonance from this. Just add all, that's what I recommend. Import it. And we should be already. Before we can actually test anything though, we need to add our game to Discord itself so that it's going to recognize it. You can go to discordapp.com slash developer slash applications, that's described here. If you're not already logged in, you do have to do that first. And then you can create a new application here. You can give your application a name, say um, awesome rich presence thing. And what you mainly need to pay attention to is this client ID. This is what your game uses to communicate with Discord. And that's something that you should not tell anyone. This is just a sample project, so I don't mind if everyone knows. But if this is actually your product, you should not share this ID with anyone. Because that would mean that anyone can implement Discord Rich Presence on your behalf, which is probably not what you want. So make sure to keep this a secret. Additionally, you can also add an icon for your game, which is the logo or something like that. In this case, I'll just use one of these test images that I have prepared. And you can add a description to your game to briefly explain what it is about. But in this case, we don't really have anything to show. So I'll just say, is that test thing? Yeah. What you then want to do is copy the client ID here. This, we are going to sync up the game in Discord. Copy it, and if you go to your project, then go to the objects folder, you should see an example folder here. And if you then open the example object, we can set up app ID here to this thing that we just copied. And I'm just going to put the demo room as our first room. And if we run the game, then it should load the example that came with the extension and it should work just fine. So the game is running and if we go here you can see that it is actually doing something. Now what this does isn't really important, these are just some tests that the creator of this extension wrote, but we can see that it is synced up accordingly. But we will disregard the example for now and start working on something of our own. So first things first, we create a new object. 
to handle the rich presence. You can call it whatever you want, I'll call it object rich presence. And we place this object in the first room. So we're going to move this room up. If you're using GameMaker Studio 1, you have to create a new room. GameMaker Studio 2 already creates a room by default. You add that object to the room, and that's that. Now we want to add a create event for our rich presence object in which we will initialize everything. So if you recall, we need an app ID first. So you can say for app ID equals this number as a string, so make sure not to forget these quotation marks. And now we're trying to initialize this. If not, browser distance create with our app ID. So what this function does is behind the scenes set up everything to work with rich presence and sync it up with our app ID. If something does not go correctly, like not being able to connect to the Discord servers or something along those lines, then it will result, uh, then it returns false. That's if we are, that's, that's why we are checking this. So if this does return false, then we just want to end everything because rich presence is not going to work. We don't even have to try. So we can simply destroy ourselves and say exit to avoid accidentally executing any more code. So now it is time to actually add images and text to our game. First you want to go back to the developer portal, make sure you save your changes here. And once you've done that, you can go to the rich presence tab and there you can sort of mess around with a preview of what your this uh, your, your rich presence thing would look like there are a couple elements here first of all this is the image with a description you can select uh, from a certain of art assets you uploaded as your main image and if you hover over it it's, it has a little description here call it test if we then hover over it it says test this again is just a preview, this will not change anything how your game actually behaves. It's just to mess around with things, which is actually very useful. So if we want to add this image here, we go to Art Assets, and we can here add images. I'm going to add these two. I'm going to call this one Sad, and this one Happy. We will need these later. And we can also add this logo thing that we can call main. Just make sure they are at least 512 by 512 pixels, so otherwise it will not upload. Once you're done with that and give them all a fitting name, you can upload everything. And you can now use these assets in actual rich presence, including the testing thing. So if we now set the large image to main, we can see that our derpy bob is here. There is also some text right here. This thing on the top in bold letters is your game name. That's something you have to change in your general information. It's something we decided on earlier. And that's just set in stone. Then it says here competitive, right below. That's the details. Details is the text right below your game title. You can change anything you want. Say not doing anything. And it places it right below the uh, game name. After that there's the state which can consist of either one or two parts. If you just want an extra description you set the state here to whatever you want and it'll display your second text but as you may have noticed there's also some other info here it says 20 out of 100. If you're doing a multiplayer game with different parties that you can join then this can give information on uh, what the capacity of the party you are currently in is, in this case 100, and how full it is, how many players there are currently in the party. Here it is 20. This is completely optional if you do not have a multiplayer game that support parties, then there is not really use. As for these timestamps, this is something we will cover in this tutorial, but not really in this preview because it uses this weird, what they call, epoch seconds. Yeah, we don't need that, so we're just going to skip over that here. 
Now we return to our project where we may, for example, want to have a certain image as that large image. So with what we can then do, we're still in the create event, we can say router dissonance set large image. And here is the name of the large image. If we go back to our art assets, you set the names here. Because we can, and we just select main. We say main here. And then the text that when you hover over it displays. So here we set test, but we can do whatever we want. We can say my awesome, amazing game. Let me maximize this so everything is visible. Um, on top of that, you can also set a small image. See, we can display that here. Yes, we can. Um, that is something that will appear on the bottom right, as we can see now. Let's say we put in sad. Then on the bottom right, we can see a small circle with our sad icon that also has a description of its own. This is something you can use for whatever. There are multiple applications. But in this case, we will do something where it's initially sad and you can press the key to make it happy. So for now, we want to set that small image to a sad one. So we can say browser distance set small image sad, and our description can be a sad face. We also want to set the details, so the text directly below the uh, game title. Set details, whatever we want. Not doing anything currently. If we now test the game, it should work. We should have something with rich presence in Discord. Now the screen is just black, but that's fine. You see that we're playing let me just maximize this. Our awesome rich presence thing, not doing anything currently, and this is all working as intended. Now we will add some events, as in we press the key and something changes in rich presence. So we can close this for now and add a new event. The key press one event. If we press one, we want to change the details. So the text directly below the game name. So we can say browser distance set details to repressed one. Now what if we want to reset the details, as in have no details at all? That is fortunately very simple. You can say key press 2, so if we press 2 we just reset everything, clear everything. Uh, there we can set browser dissonance set details to an empty string. So just two quotation marks and that's it. That'll tell Discord that you currently just do not want any details. So if we run the game, it defaults to not doing anything currently. If we, I press 1 now, and it'll say we pressed 1, and I'm pressing 2 now, and now it's completely gone. So that's how you can set details and reset them. Now, as discussed earlier, we are going to change the sad face in the small image to a happy face. So if we press free, we set this and set small image to it was called happy. And the description would be a happy face. Very press free, that image should now change to run the game. It is currently sad. I'm pressing free. And it is suddenly happy again. Now we are going to go over the state. So the text directly below the details. If we press 4. Then we update the state. You can say browser distance at state. 
to whatever you want. Uh, it's called in a party. And this by itself does not contain any party info, so it doesn't contain any stats after it. That's something we will cover immediately when I showcase this. So we press 4 and it says in a party here. However, if we now press 2, which is supposed to reset everything, oops, it still says in a party. So we have to make sure to update that to also set our state to nothing. And now it should reset properly. But uh, we actually want to add party info now. Let's say we are currently in a party with 10 people, but there's a capacity of 60 something like that and we want to tell discord that if we press 5 we're going to tell discord that information so your browser dissonance set party first is the party size that's in this case 10 we're with 10 people and the party max is the capacity there's 60 people max and then the party id if you are working on a game with parties then you will almost definitely have some sort of identifier to distinguish parties that you don't accidentally mess between them. This can really be anything as long as it is a string. Uh, it really depends on how your game handles these party IDs. In this case I'll just say A1, that's our party ID. It really doesn't matter. If we run the game First we press 4, then we press 5, and say in a party, 10 of 60. That's exactly what we wanted. The next thing, and the last thing to cover, are timestamps. There are two kinds of timestamps. One is saying how much time has elapsed, so for example, I spent 2 minutes and 13 seconds in the builder. Or there's the other one that says in 1 minute and 30 seconds our match will start so that's either how many time has how much time has passed or how much time has yet to pass in order to start something both use the same function you can say browser distance set timestamps and the first one is how much time has elapsed and the argument it takes is how many seconds from now it should start counting down so we can for example say 5 and then 5 seconds after we press the 6 key it starts counting down. And you can, you really don't want to have both at once because then discord size priority which can be kind of weird. So you want either the first one or the second one. The one you don't want, you want to say undefined in that argument. Then the extension knows that it should be skipped. So now if we run the game and we press 6, it should start counting down 5 seconds from now. I'm pressing 6 now. We can see that it is not yet counting down. And now it is counting down 5 seconds after we initially pressed it. So that's how you use that one. The other one is also fairly simple. You just say this one is undefined and let's say our match starts in 90 seconds, one and a half minutes. If you now press 6, we can see that it counts down. And that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you for watching. As you can see, Discord Rich Presence is pretty versatile. Aside from the examples that I showed today, there are many things you can do to customize it specifically for your game. There are already a lot of games that use it, that put it to good use, and it can really be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. Huge shout out to Rouser for creating this extension. I definitely think it's worth the five bucks you have to throw in, but ultimately that's up to you. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you some other time.